The invite sounded tantalizing. Travel 8,000 miles to one of the most remote countries in the world and then be the first person to drive a 200 mile an hour car across desolate roads at altitudes half the height of Everest. This is Bolivia in central South America where the locals have never even heard of Ferrari, let alone seen one drive through their village. We were going to drive a Ferrari 599 on one leg of the Pan American Challenge, a 20,000 mile marathon to showcase the 599 all the way from Brazil to New York. And we were intrigued to see if a supercar could cope with such harsh conditions. After three flights and 30 hours, we were there. Just one problem, the car wasn't. We've landed at a place called Uni. And there are no Ferraris. Half the town seems to have come out to uh, admire our wonderful aircraft, but we'd rather they were admiring Ferraris. We waited for two hours. Even the locals lost interest. I was beginning to think the whole thing was a hoax. Finally, though, something appeared out of the dust. Well, it's, uh, it's not quite the Ferrari I was expecting, but... Um, Apparently we need this to get us to the Ferrari. A rickety taxi took us through the biggest salt flats in the world. This is surreal. But sure enough, in the middle of nowhere, there was our car. I just wanted to get in and floor it across the enormous playground. But, unfortunately, the fun was short-lived. The moment we left the smooth salt surface, Enrique, Ferrari's expedition leader, imposed a few speed limits. No, we haven't slowed the film down. That's the real speed we were told to drive at. Well, we're finally out on the open road and cracking on at a really racy 40 kilometers an hour. And Enrique, our great leader, is babying us along. And the boat's not that bad. I appreciate that he's got to try and make these cars last 20,000 miles, but then a test isn't a test unless you get on with it a bit, Enrique. My mum's Morris Thousand could do 20,000 miles at this pace. As you might have guessed, we're not actually sort of driving on our own. Not only have we got Enrique leading us at a steady pace to keep his Ferrari suspension in one piece, we've got this convoy of. Uh, mechanics and everything else following us in a great blur of dust and one other 599 GTB. Half an hour later and it seemed Enrique's speed limit hadn't been strict enough. Something had gone wrong. Who's to we have a problem? And I start her up. It just died. Now it's really good. Check OK. Put it into gear. Move. A 170 grand car isn't always best. Are you returning to me with mechanic? Over. Middle of nowhere, dead freight. Mechanics arriving now. The mechanic jumped in my car and decided the best solution was to, well, boot it. At 12,000 feet, the traction control had got a bout of altitude sickness. Apparently, the same thing had happened the day before. And after a few minutes of rather rapid TLC, they gave us the car back. The car is now fixed. It was all my fault, obviously. Nothing to do with this flappy paddle, stupid traction control, F1 track. Give me gear lever, dip the clutch, flip the revs, go. So maybe tomorrow I find my way home. Just seen a signpost where we're ending up tonight. 200 kilometers still to go. It's half past four, and at this rate, it's going to take us five more hours. Ferrari doesn't seem to be worrying at all about these ruts. I think my teeth are chattering away more. It's like a sort of washboard surface. It's 
getting dark because the dark, the dust kicked up in the headlights really blinds you. But the world's slowest road trip was about to get a bit slower. As the gloom descended, Enrique hit the panic button and our pace slowed to an absolute crawl. Mind you, we did have a few major rivers to cross. It's about, it's about four inches deep. God's sake. I've never, ever been guided through a puddle. I mean, what's his problem? What is his problem? Honestly. So maybe tomorrow I find my way All thoughts of enjoying the next day's journey had disappeared. By now, I was beginning to wonder if we'd ever get through day one.